Kiana Doherty, I think. I'm not sure. I couldn't find her saying her name anywhere, which I do appreciate. She usually gets right to the point in her videos. There's no like long intro, which is nice, but it also means, I don't know how you say her name. She's a YouTuber who talks a lot about weight loss. I've seen four or five of her videos looking at like those I eat a lot reality TV shows like Secret Eater. This video, unfortunately, it is not great. It's called The Disturbing Reality of Ultra Processed Food. Most of it is just a rehash of this CNN article, you may be eating pre-digested food, here's why. That's a title. But yeah, this is this is a problem because the article is not well balanced at all. It's basically just ultra processed foods are yucky and bad. <laughs> That's not to say potato chips and cookies and whatever the fuck this is are healthy. I don't think anyone is saying that. When you take a whole food and you concentrate it, remove a bunch of the water, add a bunch of oil, a bunch of sugar, a bunch of salt, you reduce the nutrients in that food while also making it easier to eat and often more enjoyable to eat. So for instance, it's very easy to eat 500 calories of potato chips. It's not so easy to eat 500 calories of baked potato, unless you add a bunch of bacon and butter and cheese and stuff to it. 500 calories of potato chips, 3.5 ounces of food. 500 calories of baked potato, 19 ounces of food. That doesn't mean eating potato chips automatically makes you unhealthy, but it does mean if you are regularly eating foods like potato chips, it can be harder to get the nutrients you need and harder to maintain a healthy weight. Being overweight, obese in particular, is strongly linked to various negative health outcomes. Yes, obesity obesity is bad. I actually have a video on health at every size, if you're interested. But Kiana's video isn't about nutrient density or calories, it's about the processing specifically. It's not just calories or sugar or a lack of fiber. Quote, according to emerging science, it may be due to manufacturing processes that pre-digest raw food ingredients. We are eating pre-digested Food. She doesn't go on to explain what this means, only that it sounds gross. The idea of eating pre-digested food is just so viscerally awful. Okay, but by this understanding, this bypassing the body's signals of, of fullness, a lot of cooking <laughs> is pre-digested. A lot of homemade cooking is pre-digested. Anytime you are cooking a food significantly, concentrating it and removing water, adding in a bunch of yummy stuff, a bunch of butter and salt, that is going to bypass your body's ability to sense fullness. Anytime you make a calorically dense food, that's what happens. Even if you're just pan frying broccoli with olive oil and salt, you are shrinking the food down somewhat. I mean, what can you eat more of, raw broccoli or cooked broccoli? Yeah, that's not to say cooked broccoli is bad, only that pre-digested is not a meaningful distinction. Basic food crops such as corn, wheat, and potatoes are dissembled into their molecular parts, starchy flours, protein isolates, fats, and oils, or what manufacturers call slurries. The bulk of what is extracted is starch slurry, a milky mixture of starch and water. But we've also extracted proteins and fibers, according to a video explanation of the process from Start Europe. Roughly half of the starch slurry goes to produce starch-based sugars and other derivatives. Those are created by hydrolysis, a process similar to human digestion. Digestion. Okay, how does this make that food more unhealthy than just your typical, like, calorically dense foods you cook at home? She brings up Pringles and just how processed they are, right? They're not just potato chips. They're basically a mix of starches. And how at home you can make potato chips with just three ingredients, potatoes, oil, and salt. But the three ingredient potato chips you make at home, if you're actually frying potatoes, still bad. It's still a calorically dense, nutrient devoid food. It's not healthy, whether you're getting it out of a bag or out of your fryer. If the issue, as she says, is not just the frying, but it's the, the extra stuff, right? The diglycerides, you have to to actually prove that, and she does not. A homemade apple pie is only a level three food because yeah, it's got sugar and fat and whatever else, but it's really just a combination of regular old processed ingredients you can find in any normal home or grocery store. A McDonald's apple pie, on the other hand, is a group four ultra processed food because it's made up of a ton of industrial ingredients created by a series of industrial techniques. Four and a half minutes in and she still has not explained why pre-digesting is so bad. And I love the scary music when she shows the McDonald's pie. Industrial ingredients. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Anyway, according to Chronometer, one McDonald's baked apple pie weighing 2.72 ounces is 235 calories. The same amount of homemade apple pie is roughly the same calories, carbs, fat, 
protein, fiber, and micronutrients. The only difference is how they're made. One is homemade and the other is ultra processed, which is way worse because you. Much like the regurgitated food mother birds feed their babies in the nest, ultra processed food is quick and easy to digest, according to experts, but that's not how the human digestive system was meant to work. When food moves through the digestive system in ways mother nature didn't intend, the body loses the ability to send a signal of fullness to the brain, said Dr. David Katz, a specialist in preventative and lifestyle medicine. Your body is expecting to have to break down the nutrients in the food. So when this process is already partially completed, it's no wonder that people are so hungry. It's no wonder that people are overeating. So eating a not pre-digested apple pie is somehow more satisfying than a McDonald's apple pie? Again, source. Because again, they are both calorically dense products with virtually the same macros. They are both low in water and fiber. They are both far removed from the original source, apples. 2.72 ounces of apple is only 40 calories, yet two grams of fiber. Two medium apples is still fewer calories, yet weighs almost five times more than the pie with almost nine times the fiber. Point is, I don't think Mother Nature intended for us to eat any apple pies, lab made or otherwise. We didn't evolve eating such calorically dense foods all the time. It's no wonder that the obesity rate has been skyrocketing since at least the 80s, around the time that ultra-processed food entered the food supply in an unprecedented way. Just to be clear, Americans have been gaining weight for far longer. It's not like processed foods entered the scene and then all of a sudden Americans started getting fat. No, we've been getting fat since we've been recording weight. For the 19th century, we've had samples from the West Point Military Academy revealing that by today's standards, BMI values were amazingly low. 19-year-old white cadets had an average BMI value of 20.5. That is to say, about the 18th percentile of today's standards. About 90% of the cadets were below today's median reference value. The first sample here is West Point cadets, the second and third Citadel Military Academy students, and then the last two are national samples. If we look at the SCS alone, we see a clear trend upward in BMI long before the ultra process takeover in the 80s. National samples collected between 1959 and 2006 tell a similar story. We were getting fatter long before the 80s. The highest deciles increased by some 18 to 22 units during the century under consideration, while the lowest ones increased by merely one to three units. Translated into weight, these increases in BMI values imply that in the 10th percentile, a 64 inch tall woman would have increased in weight during the 20th century by just 12 pounds. Whereas in the 90th percentile, her weight would have increased by an amazing 128 pounds or some 70%. Which sounds insane, but makes sense, right? Fast food? Fast food was around long before the 80s. The first fast food chain, White Castle, 1921. Cars, right? Being able to get around and get to various food establishment, again, long before the 80s. And more women working means less time cooking, probably means more convenience foods, more snacking. And yes, I am blaming American weight gain on feminism. It's a joke, I'm not. There are trade-offs, right? always trade-offs. Speaking of snacking, people started eating more of these kind of processed savory snacks between meals. People started drinking sugar-sweetened beverages more between meals. And that was all in coordination with a huge marketing effort from the food industry that occurred over that period of time. It started in the mid-70s and ramped up through the mid 80s and 90s. Which brings me to the real difference between the homemade apple pie and the McDonald's apple pie. It's not that the McDonald's is pre-digested and industrially made, it's that it's convenient. You can have this apple pie every day, multiple times a day, you can snack on this pie if you have a means of getting it, if you have money. But homemade pie, I don't know if you've ever made homemade pie, it's not exactly quick and easy. But whether you're eating homemade or McDonald's, it's still fatty, sugary, nutrient devoid junk food. One you can snack on as often as you want, whereas the other, unless you have like a private chef to make you pies all day, probably not. The same with Pringles and Oreos and Snicker bars and any sort of easy to buy, you know, packaged processed product. We're much more likely to snack when the food is number one, super delicious. So not just like fruit and nuts. And when it is readily available. If you had to make a Snickers bar or Pringles every single time you wanted those foods, probably not gonna eat them very often. You know, it's one thing if people were knowingly buying junk food, right? It's another thing to be purchasing a yogurt cup for your kids that promises you that it's wholesome 
only for it to be nutritionally comparable to an ice cream cone. And not an ice cream cone made of cream and sugar, but an ice cream cone made of modified milk ingredients, gums, and emulsifiers. Aw, she started so well. Yes, food marketing is terrible. I looked up yogurt, the first kid's yogurt that came up, this Danables yogurt smoothie, clearly advertised as healthy, right? It's got vitamin D and calcium, no artificial flavors or colors, yet it's seven grams of added sugars in just 50 calories. And zero fat? What the fuck? We're still doing low fat? I had no idea. But whether the ice cream contains emulsifiers or not, really? Again, if she believes that matters and is negatively affecting us, she needs to explain why. Ice cream is unhealthy, whether it's whole cream or modified milk or oat milk, right? It's sugar and fat no nutrients, and delicious, unfortunately. Obviously we have our junk food, our honey buns and Debbie cakes and Cheetos and candy and whatever else. But then we also have most breads and not just Wonder Bread, these are all ultra processed too. Wow, look at those awful ingredients, whole grain wheat flour, flaxseed, sugar, yeast, wheat, gluten, vegetable oil, sorbic acid, it's pretty scary. So yes, packaged whole grain bread is in the same category as Pringles. If that isn't enough to make you ponder the whole processed food categorization process, maybe this will help. This study published last year got a whole lot of press. People thought it meant, oh my god, ultra processed foods, UPFs are bad, actually found an inverse correlation with processed breads, ultra processed breads and cereals. That means the researchers found a reduction in risk with these foods. It's just a correlation. It doesn't mean that if you eat bread, you're going to reduce your risk for what were they looking at? Multimorbidity, right? Having like cancer and diabetes. It doesn't mean that, but I mean, really? <laughs> Of course, these are different. <laughs> like one has fiber, number one, which is especially important considering most Americans don't get enough. Any non-dairy milk, most plant-based foods. I feel like I'm watching the Bobby Flav guy, the, no, no, <laughs> Bobby Flav, Bobby Flay? Flava Flav? Seriously, she shows sweetened soy milk right after Gushers. Same category. Anyway, it's interesting that like she didn't choose an unsweetened, maybe they didn't have one in store, but there are definitely unsweetened soy milks, like the unsweetened silk. Like, am I supposed to believe this is unhealthy because what, gel and gum? Breaded soy chicken, again, could have chose one without breading, but even still, like it's mostly soy and wheat and starches, yeast, added vitamins. Is it as healthy as beans and tofu? No, but it's certainly not devoid of nutrition. It's got a decent amount of protein and fiber. Like, should it really be in the same category as Gushers? So we're almost at the end of the video and we finally get to a study that she just reads off from the article, not the actual study. It's just quotes from the article. 20 healthy volunteers were locked away from the outside world for one month. For two weeks, they ate only ultra-processed foods. For the remaining two weeks, they ate a diet made up of minimally processed foods. Each diet contained the exact same quantity of calories, sugars, fiber, fat, salt, and carbohydrates. The only difference was that one diet consisted only of foods that were ultra-processed. In two weeks, participants on the ultra-processed diet gained an average of two pounds. 0.9 kilograms. On the minimally processed diet, they lost the equivalent amount of weight. Now, at first I thought, wow, they actually mashed it for fiber. Like that's, that's pretty cool. They didn't just give, you know, it'd be pretty obvious, just give people processed foods, give people whole foods. Geez, I wonder what will happen. Presumably there was a good amount of fiber on both diets. Then I went and had a look at the supplementary material, which included photos of the meals. Very cool also very funny. <laughs> Look at the difference between an ultra processed breakfast and an unprocessed breakfast. Do you, do you see? Do you see any difference? Look at the difference between an ultra processed lunch and an unprocessed lunch, or my favorite, a processed dinner <laughs> and an unprocessed dinner. <laughs> Were you at all prepared for the size of that meal? <laughs> Freely? <laughs> freely like as an omnivore is that is that what i'm saying and wait you're telling me the people who ate this instead of this ate 500 less calories a day no way i don't believe it like i appreciate i appreciate them trying to control for the fiber and the water by giving them a fuck ton of lemonade <laughs> i kind of hate when people do we really need a study but like Really, we need a study to know the difference between salad and fucking lemonade. Getting water from whole fruits and vegetables and grains and beans is not the same as 
sugar water. Just not. To think that the relevant difference here is, what, the emulsifiers and the pre-digesting nature of the ultra process? No, dude, it's the size. <laughs> One meal is significantly less dense. One meal has more volume, has more water and fiber in the actual foods. It is physically filling you up. There is no doubt in my mind that you could replace these foods, like this one with the pasta. You could replace that with homemade pasta and homemade white bread and homemade cookies and you would get the same results. It's an unhealthy meal, whether it's made at home or in a lab. What makes the study so interesting is that these diets were matched for composition. So the participants eating the ultra processed food were eating the same amount of protein, calories, sugars, etc., as the group eating the minimally processed fresh meals. And yet the ultra processed food group were still hungrier. They were still eating more calories. Given how often she talks about calories and volume in her videos, I find it really difficult to believe she did more than just read this article. I don't believe for a second she looked at the study. I think she's smart enough to see the ridiculousness right away. Science is really starting to reveal that it's not the lack of fiber, it's not additional sugar, it's the ultra processed foods themselves that are the problem. Even if the results weren't questionable, it's 20 participants. It really doesn't reveal much of anything other than, hey, instead of snacking on goldfish, how about fruits and nuts? Who would have thought? To be fair to Kiana, there are other studies, she doesn't mention this, but I will felt like I would try and, you know, steel man this. There's the one I already mentioned earlier that, again, found processed breads. Not bad, actually. And then this one, this umbrella review, which is a review of pre-existing reviews. As this epidemiologist explains, this umbrella review by definition is including a whole heap of low quality research, and we don't have much of an idea of how those bad studies are impacting the final numbers. There also just aren't that many studies to draw from, and many of the reviews included in the umbrella review include the same studies. Two of the reviews include five of the same papers. This means that the umbrella review is double, triple, or even quadruple counting the data. Rather than 14 entirely separate analyses that the umbrella review has collated into one, we've got a handful of samples that have been analyzed many dozens of times. If even one of these samples has a bias that we are unaware of, it could completely undermine the entire analysis by the authors. And at the end of the day, we are talking about correlation, not causation. Ultra processed foods have been linked to some negative health outcomes. Assuming those links are true, which we definitely should not do to be clear, but if we do, that still doesn't mean that the processed food is causing depression, for instance. It could just be that people who are depressed are more likely to eat ultra processed foods, which, you know, would make sense given the nature of depression. <laughs> Again, we already know Pringles are unhealthy. I think focusing on the process, the, the pre-digested aspect of it, kind of sends the message that if you deep fry some sliced potatoes at home, it's fine. But it's not. Again, it's still a low water, low fiber, nutrient devoid food. Now you could bake or air fry them and make them significantly better. I make some like steak fries all the time at home with russet potato, a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper garlic powder, onion powder sometimes. Just put them in the oven and yeah, I mean, pretty good amount of water and fiber. I mean, look, they're really delicious. It's hard not to eat a million of them, at least for me. But overall, pretty healthy. I would consider like a normal portion size of them, so not the amount I normally eat. Pretty healthy, certainly much healthier than frying. But if we focus on the processing aspect of frying potato chips at home or baking them, they're the same. Whether you fry or bake, it's the same categorization. How is that helpful to the average person who ultimately just needs to eat less calories? And if you think I'm being silly that people are not going to take this from ultra process, well, look what I found on Reddit, the ultra processed food subreddit. This person is asking if canned beans are ultra processed. And then this person reasonably asks OP, like, why? Why are you trying to eat less UPFs, to which OP responds, not really sure. In other words, they heard UPFs are bad and now are asking if canned beans are bad. Can canned beans, one of the healthiest foods, foods that most people do not eat a lot of. Great. Here's another one. This person feels like a UPF free hero for frying her own food. She ate a very unhealthy dinner with the added bonus of fatigue in a disgusting kitchen. It's a win-win, really. Eating right is hard enough. Do we really want people thinking firming agents are the real concern and that home frying is somehow healthy? Or maybe we want them focused on nutrients and calories instead. 
To me, all this is very similar to anti-vax. I don't know Kiana's uh, views on that, but how many people are against vaccines because of scary sounding chemicals? Because of ignorance, ultimately. How many people now are going to be against ultra processed foods because emulsifiers and gel and gum and hydrolysis, ew. I mean, yes, processed foods are generally bad for us, whereas vaccines are like pretty awesome. So it's not, not a perfect analogy, but I think you get what I'm saying. Like I, I want people to be afraid, quote unquote, of processed foods for the real reasons, to understand why we should be careful around these foods, not because they're afraid of hydrolysis. Now, I spent quite a while going through Kiana's video and writing this script, but the truth is I already knew the quality of the content just within the first 45 seconds. Eating too many ultra processed foods could shorten your lifespan. Raises the risk of diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease, and depression. They can cause harm similar to smoking. Eating them too often could be taking years off your life. But this article breaks down one of the hidden reasons that ultra processed food is leading to all these issues is leading to all of these issues not associated with not correlated not linked to but is leading to aka is causing she's saying ultra processed foods cause depression and moving on from there not not explaining anything anytime you read or hear someone treat correlation as causation run away it's very likely that whatever else they have to say is going to be fear-mongering pre-digested food not science Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I do hope you enjoy it. I would love your thoughts below. And of course, like and subscribe helps out the channel. And of course, all of my members and patrons help out the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog, which I'll have up within the next couple days here. And then I do a controversial topic, something that I don't really want to post here. And that's it for me. Thanks, guys. New video soon. One thing I really like from this podcast, the diet was bad in like the 1900s. <laughs> like we have this idea that people used to eat just all whole foods, but like, no, it was a lot of, a lot of refined carbs. If you go back and look at the U.S. diet in 1909, 1920, it was very high in carbohydrate and it wasn't whole grains. It was mostly white flour and <laughs> it was a fair amount of sugar too, actually. The amount of sugar that we're eating right now is not that much higher than what people were eating in the 1920s in the U.S. And again, that was not like they weren't chewing on pieces of sugar cane. We're talking about white sugar. And I'm not saying that's good for you. I think that they had a pretty bad diet back then in many ways, but it wasn't giving them obesity. And it wasn't leading to the types of diabetes rates that we're seeing today. I mean, look at the like the nutrition, those awful like propaganda videos from like the 50s and 60s. Like, is that healthy? No. I think truly eating healthy is a very recent phenomenon, right? Like we, we actually have the ability to eat so healthfully, to eat so many fruits and vegetables. Like that's, that's awesome. You know, I kind of, I don't know, even like for myself, you know, I get course processed foods are delicious and sometimes I eat too many but it's like man you should really I don't know take advantage of this you can just eat all healthy foods all the time like that is pretty incredible but Keanu's but Keanu, Keanu how did I not see that coming I'm surprised I don't have a don't say Keanu note in my thing okay but Keanu's video is not about nutrient Deficiency? Density. This is why you don't record at 6 p.m. It's too late. You're too tired. You've done too much today. You've worked and you've changed poopy diapers. Actually, I haven't changed a poopy diaper today. Can you believe there are men who won't change poopy diapers? They should be sent to the gulag. But Keanu's video... <laughs>